Well, it's good to be with you this morning. Our last morning together in our studies and my last teaching of through the Bible studies. It has been the joy of my heart to be able to do this with you. And we're finishing in a great place. Amazing scriptures today. Uh, turn to chapter 4 of Revelation. After we pray, I'll do a bit of review. Father, we pray uh, your blessing on this day. Let us sense your presence and let us sense that you, Holy Spirit, are clearly our teacher above and beyond any human speak to our hearts give us the mind of Christ and all this we pray in Jesus name Amen. Amen so to review with you from yesterday our, our last session as we began Revelation it, it really does come with its own outline on how to understand the book to understand the, how it's placed together because in chapter 1 verse 19 chapter 1 the Lord tells John to write the things that he has seen. And he has seen the resurrected, glorified Jesus. Walking in the midst of the churches. And he says, write the things that are. And the things that are are the next two chapters, chapter 2 and 3. The churches that are in existence in, in uh, the Asia Minor, the area of Turkey. Where John had pastored and knows those people. And there's seven letters to seven churches. And we keep seeing sevens. And we will. It's the number of perfection or completion. Uh, you know, it's the. Uh, it tells you this represents a, a, a full, the full circle. So all the churches through history can relate to anything in these two, these seven churches. And indeed, this speaks of the time of the church age. There are many reasons for me to believe this. And it's, it's in your notes on the last page, but you don't have to go there yet. It's also in our study, our second week of the Old Testament, where we detail Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. Because there it says, uh, it gives a timetable for Israel. I'm not going to go through the discussion of those years uh, with you today. Because it takes time. And it has been recorded for you. But Daniel received prophecy. Well, the Messiah is going to come. He's going to be cut off. Killed. 
and then the prince of the people which is the antichrist will make a covenant for seven years with the people of Israel and in the middle of that covenant he will set up the abomination of desolation this isn't review for you. This is something that I didn't discuss yesterday. Have you heard about the Antichrist setting up an image of his own making in the temple that is to be coming? Some of you have Daniel chapter 9 you'll study it later Matthew 24 Jesus says when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the temple you will know the time is coming and this is the temple that's going to be built the Antichrist in making a covenant it says he'll make a covenant to rebuild the temple but it's not a godly thing because he's deceiving the people of Israel even as he's deceiving the whole world the word anti and antichrist can mean against I'm anti this, I'm against this. But that word can also mean in the place of. Satan said, I will sit as God in the heavens. He really wanted to take God's place. And here in the last days he will try. But when the Messiah is cut off, there is a, a stopping of the timetable waiting for those last seven years the great tribulation the time of Jacob's trouble Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 I mentioned it yesterday it's in the last page of your notes and so um, and so during that time that is stopped, um, we're not saying time stops. We're saying that God inserts the Gentile age. And the, and the last seven years is waiting to be started. There's a number of years that's determined on your people. And, and, and then there's going to come a point where the Messiah is cut off. Daniel does not explain fully that gap between the Messiah being cut off and the last seven years. But from the other scriptures and from Revelation and from all these things put together, and even from Daniel chapter 2, Chapter two, where he uh, itemizes the kingdoms of the earth relating to Israel. The last kingdom to come in this uh, uh, statue that is seen. And we have this on our recording as well. 
the last kingdom to come will be the two feet of this statue. Feet and toes of iron and clay. They can be put together, but they don't fully blend together. And during the time of that kingdom, the Messiah will come and destroy all of man's kingdoms. A stone cut out of a mountain without hands. It's the statue and the feet and it all comes down to dust that is at the end of the seven years the rock of ages Jesus Christ so I shared with you what Jesus said as he went through the times of the end in Luke 21 which is uh, another another view of the same discussion as Matthew 24. And he said, Jerusalem will be under the feet of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. There's a time period. We are in it. Write the things that you've seen. The, res the glorified Jesus in the midst of the church. The things that are. The church age. Time of the Gentiles. That's what is even today. We're not in the great tribulation. The Antichrist has not been revealed. But all that is coming. And then write the things which will be after this. After all this that we just said. After these things. And the first thing we see that we shared in chapter 4 verse 1. John saw a door stand open in heaven. And the first voice he heard was like a trumpet speaking saying come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this same thought as in chapter 119 after this also translated after these things is this making sense to you? Very important, very powerful. And equally powerful. As we see John in heaven. A, a, it's, it's a picture of the rapture to me of the church. God has not appointed us to wrath but to receive salvation. And I want to talk more about that later before we're done. But we, what we have here is we have John seeing the heavenly scene. He doesn't see Jesus in the midst of the uh, churches. He sees Jesus and God the Father on the throne. And then he sees the, the living creatures and the angels. And an innumerable company in chapter 4 and 5 of people. And then in chapter 5, we're going to read verses um, 1 through um, 7. Wakukala pampando wajifumu buku 
lolembedwa mkati ndikunja kwake lo sindikizika ndizi ndikilo zisanu ndizi wili ndipo ndinaona ngeru wa mpamvu wakulalikira ndi mau akulu aenera ndani kutsegula buku ndiko masulazi zindikilo zache ndipo sana ate mmodzi mwamba kapena padziko kapena pansi padziko kutsegula pabuku upo kapena kulipenya ndipo ndinalira kwambiri chifukwa sana pezeke mmodzi woyenera kutsegula bukulo kapena kulipenya ndipo mmodzi mwa akulu anani na ndi ine usalire taona nkango ochokera mfuko la yuda muzu wa david walakika kutsegula buku ndizi zindikilo zake zisanu ndizi wili ndipo ndinaona pakati pa mpando wa chifumu ndi za moyo zinai ndi pakati pa akulu mwana wankosa alichiriri ngati wopedwa wokala nazo nyanga zisanu ndizi wili ndi maswa sanu ndi awili ndi mizimu isanu ndi wili ya mulungu Uh, yotu midwa ilowe mziko lonse ndipo anaza nalitenga kudzanjala manja la iye wakukala pa mpando wa chifumu ndipo pamene aladenga bukulo za moyo zinali ndi akulu makumi awili mpambo anai zinakwa pansi pa maso pa mwana wankosa zose zili nao azizi ndi mbale za golide zodzala ndi zofukiza ndipo ndipo mapembero ndiwo mapembero awera mtima amen It's an amazing thing John is in heaven. This is a revelation, a vision for him to give. It is future to us. And he's and someone one of the angels says who's worthy to open the scroll and loose its seal. A scroll of course there would be a legal document. When property was bought and sold. Kalelo mukagulitsa malo kuti magulitsa kandi munda kandi nyumba kandi malo. And especially if it was property that could be redeemed later by the original owner. Ah makamaka kakala malo woti mungate kugulitsa so kwa munthu wina ulendo wina. It would be sealed with a seal. Nde amatenga mapepala aja nde akatenga amamanga kena kangupanga chizindikiro ndikumaka and only opened when the person who's going to redeem it redeems. now this takes us all the way back to the book of Ruth and the picture of the kinsman redeemer How many have been through the book of Ruth? Okay, some of you remember. And uh, it will be in the first week of studies on our recording. We do a whole story on the book of Ruth. Because it's a connection. It's a connection to the promise made in Genesis for the Messiah to come. And it's a connection to right here to a scroll you don't hear about a scroll in Ruth but you hear about the redemption of property and it's not just the property but it's Ruth the bride and the And the Bible says Jesus says that we're the bride of Christ. Are you familiar with that term? The bride of Christ. Have you been redeemed? By the blood of Jesus. Well, that's the picture of Ruth. And that's, and that's the event that 
the real event is happening here for ne, all mankind. Ne nkani mene ili ku bukulo mene jala lu ndali ndi mene ikuchitika apa apa tsopano. Monga mene zida chitikira pa ja uneneri wake uja kukwanilisidwa. Seven the number of completeness. Akuti seven ndi number ya tuntu lonse. That was the word I was looking for earlier. Ndi mawa mene ndi mayanga napo. Completeness. Aku tuntu lonse. I saw a lamb having seven eyes. Akuti ndi naona mwana wanko sari ndi maswa sari ndi awiri. Is that imagery? Complete vision of everything. Yeah. So uh, and seven horns. seven. Don't think of horns like the devil. <laughs> but a horn represents authority. Power. You know, an animal with horns. All, all of its power goes through to the horns. As an Amen. Amen. And and God, David said, God has lifted up the horn of my salvation. So when you think of horn, it's power and authority. Who has complete power and authority? Jesus. He said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Hallelujah. Amen. So John's in heaven. And you would think that would solve everything. But he's weeping. Because someone says, Who's worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? And this is for emphasis that God allows this to be written this way. You can search heaven and you can search earth. Below the earth could mean those who've, all those who've died, including Abraham and Moses. It just means all of creation. There's no one. No one. Who can redeem mankind. But one. And then I looked. And I saw. A lamb. Having been slain. Jesus is the Lamb of God. John the Baptist said, as Jesus came down to be baptized, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. When we're teaching, it's I know you already know Jesus is the Lamb. I don't have to go through those verses. But here's what's happening when you teach. Even to people who've heard it before. You're putting layer on layer on layer of scripture that paints the whole picture. And faith comes by hearing. Romans 10 tells us. I believe it's verse 9. But it's right in there. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Every time I hear layers of scripture that say the same truth. And prove the clarity of Jesus being the Lamb of God. My faith gets stronger. My heart is lifted. My head is full of thoughts. I'm always thinking about problems. 
things that need to be taken care of. Zindu zote zisamalidwe. Am I alone? Kodi ndirinde kakuganiza zimene zingati kapena nuso maganiza joncho. Is that how your mind works? Na feso si maganizo atama panga zi utero zo. And the people at church. And the word of God washes over us. And the more we can put more scriptures that tell the same truth that show how clear it is. <laughs> the more our faith is built. It's a glorious thing. But there's only one who's worthy. He's not the only one who's willing. Through history, many men have risen up and thought they could conquer the world, save the world, whether they were sincere or selfish and evil. There was not one who is able or worthy. But the Lamb of God is also the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He came first as the Lamb that he might die for our sins. He returns as the Lion who will conquer all. Amen. Amen. And he has prevailed to open, loose the scroll uh, seals and open the scroll. It has been said, and I agree, that this scroll, like in the book of Ruth, that there had to be a redemption of property, is the deed to the earth. The earth and all its people. Specifically those who turn to Christ. There is a verse that says Jesus Christ is the Savior of the whole world. Especially those who believe. And our wording doesn't do justice to it. But what that means, there's no other savior for the world and it is applied to the ones who will believe. But the only salvation is through Jesus Christ. He is the savior of the entire world. Psalm 24.1, you can write it down. says the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness the world and all the people in it. Psalm 24, 1. And the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. The world and all who dwell in it. But what happened? The world fell into slavery. Ziko lidagwamu ukapolo. Slavery to sin. Ah, uh, ukapolo wa uchimo. Slavery to Satan. Ukapolo wa satana. Let me give you two verses. Ndiko pata ni mavisa wili. Second Corinthians four three. Ah, uh, two Akolinto four verse kia three. We want the fullest picture here. Ah, uh, tufuna dikari ndi chunzi cheni cheni. Before we move on. Tisa na pidiri ni. We were we've talked about this verse before. Rakambapo kari za visi mene. Or about this section. But we haven't talked about this particular point. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. Two chapter 4, verse 3. Um, and 4. Uh, 3 and 4. And please read. Komangatiso utenga wabu ino watu upimbika, upimbika mwa iwa agutaika. Mwa emine mulungu wantawi ino ya pansipano. Uh, Unachitiza kungu maganizo awo, awo sakurupirira. 
kulichi walisiru cha utengo wa wino wa ule melele wa kristo amene alichi tuzi tuzi cha murungu chisawalire mm. the small small god Mulungu waziko. The false god. Mulungu waboza. The god of this world, Mulung, of this age. Mulungu waziko la pansi, mulungu wanyengo ino. That's Satan. Amene yundi satana. He has taken authority that did not belong to him. Watenga ulamuliro umene suri wake. That authority was yielded to him. Ulamuliro umene unajita kupatisidwa. By the fall of Adam. Atachimwa Adam, ndepemene anatenga ulamuliro, ndima pepa la onse aziko kumpasa satana. Amen. Is this, is this clear to us? Adam was sold into sin. We are his descendants. Sold into sin. That's why Jesus is called Redeemer. And so he's the God of this age. It doesn't mean he's God. But he has taken authority over mankind. In a sense. Through our yielding to sin. And, and you know Satan is stronger than you or I. But he's not stronger than God in us. He's a created being. He's not an equal opposite force to God. But his his rule Koma ulamlido wake is do you have a word for usurped? Taken yeah. out uh, yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. Ah uh, ndi mtu amene anango karanga kuti udindo unali wawina nde eye wango landa udindo uja ndi kukala nao. And now turn a few books later. Tatendi segule mabuku angapo sokoko. So Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. A Efeso chapter 2 verse 2. And actually, we'll start in verse 1. But only only 1 and 2, even though it's half a sentence. Okay. okay. Uh, Ephesos. Ephesians chapter? Chapter 2. Ephesos chapter 2. Verses 1 and 2. Verse 1 and 2. Ephesos chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Ndipo ino anakupatsa ni uh, Ndipo ino anakupatsa ni moyo pokala munali akufa ndizo lakwa ndizo chimwa zano zimene munaenda mokale monga mama endedwe adzikola pansirino monga mankulu wa ulamlilo wa mlengalenga wa mzimu wa kuchita tsopano mwa ana akusamvera Does your say the prince and power of the air does you use the word air Yes. Okay. Not air, but the, it's like uh, well, hey. sky. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So Satan here is called the uh, the prince and the power of the air. And for both our words, English and uh, Chichewa. Uh, Chichewa there's a better way. Uh, uh, the subconscious mind. Uh, it's not the physical air. It's the spiritual sky. There is a flow uh, of sin in this world. There is a leader um, pouring out sinfulness to us. I'm not saying you don't sin with you can sin without Satan even existing. <laughs> but I'm saying he leads the way. There's the course or path of this world. It's not a path through the maze or a path of dirt. It's the path of the mind. The path of the heart. And people walk that path 
without even knowing it. They're under his dominion. I was there. You were there. They're all there. Jesus came to break his control. But he's still moving now. We're in the age of the Gentiles. The tribulation has not yet come. The seals have not yet been broken. But as we proceed, from chapter 6 through 19, the seals are broken by the Lamb. And judgment on his evil are beginning to take place. And the process of the completed redemption takes place in chapter 6 through 19. Until Jesus comes and, and, and completely vanquishes the enemy. In chapter 19. Now we're going to talk about what happens during the, the chapter 6 through 19. And we won't go into great detail. But I'll give you some thoughts for understanding trumpets and bowls. Uh, and then we'll finish on the uh, the last few chapters and the full redemption. But this is where God has not appointed us to wrath. In the center of your page in page 2 of Revelation. Uh, I mentioned it yesterday. Is the church of Jesus to go through the great tribulation. As God's wrath is poured out on the world. But I told you those two verses in Thessalonians. And they're, they're written for you. I just share, shared chapter 5 verse 9. And below that is chapter 1 verse 10. Jesus delivered us from the wrath to come. And so the tribulation is a time of God's wrath. It is broken into two, three and a half year sections. And at the beginning, when the Antichrist is revealed, he's not revealed as the Antichrist to the people of the earth. They think he's great. He's miraculous. He's charismatic. He is able to solve problems. The world is looking for someone like him. We haven't found that person. True Christians are looking for the true Messiah and Savior to come. And non-believers are looking for somebody to come. But you remember, God gave Israel when they Pride, we want a king. God said, you ask for a king when I'm your king. But I'm going to give you a king. And then, and then he would go on to use the king uh, to bring us David and to bring us the king of kings, Jesus. But first, 
He gave them a king after their own heart. David is called the king after God's own heart. He had God's heart. He wanted God's will. Amen. Amen. But Saul, the first king, because they cried for a king to be like all the other nations. He gave them a king after their heart. Saul was rebellious to God. Saul was a reflection of those people. He was a reflection of their rebellion. But God would bring the true king. David would picture that. The real king is Jesus. And he will come. But the world is seeking the same thing. Someone to fight their battles. And so they don't have to face problems. You're easily manipulated. When your number one goal. Is to have your problems go away. Instead of your number one goal. To honor God. That's where I find out what my true character is. I could be in trouble. I could be in need. And I can take something that's not mine. And I can say, well, the circumstance is so extreme. I have no other, I have no, I have no other choice. Yes, I do. I can choose to honor God and suffer whatever I must suffer until God meets me and takes This can apply in so many ways. Sometimes I can rob myself of the blessing of God. Because I don't wait on the Lord. And let him be my supply. God help us all. To not be manipulated by need. But to be led by character. It is my number one goal. Is to honor God. If I live, I live to Christ. If I die, I die to Christ. Amen. 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 Yeah. And live or die, I'm going to rise. You're going to rise. We're going to rise to meet Jesus. The trumpet will sound. At the last trump. The trumpet of God. As we read in, in uh, Thessalonians 4. And we will not be in the uh, great tribulation. Because that is God's judgment. And Jesus took my judgment. So I have verses for you. I won't read them, I just point them out. In Isaiah 53. Isaiah chapter 53 in Romans chapter 5 uh, Aroma chapter 5 in 1 John 4:10 1 John 4 in John 18:11 Ah uh, John 18 verse 11 where Jesus was getting ready to pay the price So I thank God if I'm wrong about the timing it won't matter Ah uh, 
if I end up that I'm misunderstanding the great tribulation. And I have to face that. If I'm here. And I don't believe that's what will happen. My faith won't be shaken. I'll just know I got one point wrong. I'll see these things unfolding anyway. And I'll know there's only seven years. And I'd be preaching more fervently. Now here's why I tell you this. In my country, when we debate these things, there are people who say you're setting your people up for discouragement because they're going to have to go through the great tribulation. And you're telling them they won't have to. I can't imagine anyone turning away from God. And because the timing was different. When all the facts are still right in front of them. And the Bible is coming true right in front of them. They're not going to give up on God. And they're going to say, Pastor Rick was wrong about this point. And but he wasn't wrong that we're in the great tribulation and Jesus is going to come and finish this work they're going to say I'm going to follow Jesus to death. Because I can see Satan's man right there. And I'm not following him. And finally, for people who say, well, if this is all true, I'll just turn to Jesus when I see it start happening. They won't, they won't follow him now when no one's coming and saying, deny Christ or and they think they're going to be strong enough. When it's that hard. However, God is gracious. And, and the Bible will see it. Many people come to the Lord during the Great Tribulation. That is true. But I would really discourage anyone from thinking they can take that path. That's Will they be that person? It's foolish thinking. Today is the day of salvation. Today if you'll hear his voice. And harden not your heart. God doesn't want you to go through And he doesn't want you to miss. What he has for you now. Kuzerani, mtsogolo mungu.
He loves us. And he's true to us. And he told us what's going to come. And we are light bearers. To help people turn from the darkness. From the power of Satan. To the power of God. What a gift we have. What a blessing we have. Those that sleep, sleep in the night. And they sleep in the dark. But we are children of the Lord. We are children of the day. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, your will be done. That was the prayer you gave us. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And for that to take place, we know that chapter 6 through 19 of Revelation must take place. Thank you, though, Lord, that we can trust in you. Wherever we are, we are with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right.